All right, before we go to the video, all Ring camera users, there is an issue in the recordings and I think has been going on since March of this year. I just found out because of my testing with this light, so watch my final thoughts at the end. Hello guys, Lifehackster here. Today, my Ring Smart Lights finally came in after two times that they pushed back the release date. Well, they are now here, and because there are a lot of stuff to cover, I'll be doing a two-part video series with the Ring Smart Lights. Today, I'll be doing the unboxing, setup, and installation of the Ring Bridge, Floodlight, and Spotlight, and also going to check out the motion sensor. The second video will be more on landscape lighting with the path light, step lights, and the low voltage transformer. Now, I'm not sure if everybody are excited about the lights, but for me, it is their integration and linking of the cameras that I'm excited about, and I'll tell you later on the reason why. I'm not sure if you are familiar with Mr. Beams, but they are an LED battery-powered outdoor lighting company, and Ring has recently acquired them. And as you can see later on, Ring smart lights are almost identical to what Mr. Beams have been selling. The brain of the Ring smart lighting is the Ring Bridge. It is a small micro USB powered device which acts as a hub for the ring lights so that it will be able to talk or integrate with ring cameras, alarm, and doorbell cams. The smart lights and sensors uses a power efficient long range RF network and the bridge converts this signal to Wi-Fi to send your alerts and vice versa if you're sending command to control the lights. This bridge can support up to 50 smart light devices. Inside the box, you find some paperwork, mounting screws, a micro USB cable, power adapter, a mounting bracket, and the ring bridge itself. It has the Wi-Fi and status lights in the front, a reset hole on the side, and the micro USB port at the bottom. You can mount the bracket in a wall, then slide in the bridge. Time to set this up. Plug in the micro USB power supply. Go to the app and click Setup Device. Scroll down the bottom and click Smart Lighting Bridge. Scan the QR code at the back of the device. Find the location inside your house that is close to your Wi-Fi router, and this is where you're going to install this. Click the blue light is flashing. Click Join. Choose the Wi-Fi network you want to use. Type in the password and wait until the bridge is connected and the setup is complete. Now, let us unbox the Ring Floodlight. Here are its features. It is a 600 lumen battery powered LED light. By the way, this is a yellow soft light, just like the Ring's Floodlight camera, and not a white light. It is motion activated and connects to the Ring app and the Ring bridge enabled. We have some paperwork and we have the light itself. We have the PIR sensor, which you can adjust the position up or down or left and right. The same thing with the floodlights. You can adjust them up or down and side to side. You can twist the back side to unlock and open the back. You can then push the battery tabs in to remove the battery holder. There are some mounting hardware inside. This light needs 4 D-cell batteries. Let's add this to the app. Scan the QR code at the back. We will need to install the batteries and twist to lock the backplate in place. Click continue. Add the light to a light group which I will choose backyard. And I'll name the light backyard flood light. Make it a unique name so that you can easily control it with Amazon Lex if one is set up in your house. I'll skip link devices for now and we have the flood light configured. Let's test this out. Lights on and off. Next, we will unbox the Ring Spotlight. We have some paperwork, we have the toolkit, and the spotlight itself. It is a 400 lumen yellow soft light. Just for reference, here is one of Mr. Beam's spotlights. Aside from being round faced instead of square, it is the same as the rings. You can remove the base from the light by unscrewing this thumb screw. Twist the front end to the left to unlock and open up the battery compartment. Push the tabs in to remove the battery holder so that you can install the batteries. This light will also need 4 D-cell batteries. Time to set this up. Scan the QR code located in the battery holder. Put in 4 D-cell batteries. 
push in the battery holder to secure it in place, and twist the front end to the right following the arrows to lock it in. Click Continue. Name your spotlight. Click Continue until it is connected to the app. Another device that we will unbox is the motion sensor. I have other plans with this sensor in my future videos, but for now it will trigger one of my ring cameras to start recording which I will show you later on. We have some paperwork, sticker and the toolkit that comes with installation screws. This sensor can detect motion of up to 15 feet and is weather resistant. Just pull the two tabs out to open up the sensor and it will need three AAA batteries. Scan the QR code to start setting this up. Put in three AAA batteries and pop the back cover back in. Name the sensor and click continue. Ring states that the battery life of their smart lights will be around a year and also depends on how often it gets triggered. Now we will look at the app and check out the settings of these devices. On the main user interface, you will see the Smart Lights tab in the Neighbors and History menu. Just swipe to the left if it doesn't show up. When you click on it, you will get to the light groups, so you can assign any of your lights to a group. You can see that I haven't added anything to the front group yet, that will be on another video. You can turn on or off all the lights assigned to a group. You can click on a specific one to see which Smart Lights are in that group. In my backyard group, I only have the floodlight for now. In this window, you can control the lights and turn on or off the motion alerts. In the settings, you can set schedule for your motion alerts if needed. In my case, and I have to schedule the notifications to be off during daytime and I'll tell you the reason why later on. When you go back to the light group page, there is the motion snooze where you can temporarily cancel motion notification from 15 minutes to 2 hours. In the light settings, you can choose how long the light will turn on when it gets activated. To save battery life, I set mine to turn off after 30 seconds. You can also click on a specific device to change the settings. Like on the floodlight, you can see the battery level, on or off toggle switch, and change brightness levels. There is also the event history where you can see the specific days and times when the motion sensor was triggered, regardless if you turned off notifications. Then we have the light settings where you can set the light sensor to just activate the lights when it is nighttime, and you can set the sensitivity of how dark the ambient lighting needs to be before the light turns on. Then we have the motion settings for the floodlights, and you can adjust the sensitivity from low, medium to high. Take note that I set it to low. And if you're subscribed to Ring Protect Plus plan, then you'll have access to the Link Devices tab. This is where you can set all other ring cameras or lights to either record and to turn on their lights when the floodlight senses motion. In my install, I will need to link my Spotlight Cam wired version to this floodlight so that it can start recording and also turn on the spotlights when the floodlight gets triggered. All the other lights like the spotlight will have the same settings and the motion detector will only have the motion settings. The Rings app is pretty intuitive and you can easily learn how to change the settings. Now time to install these lights and test them out. The floodlight will replace my Mr. Bean's floodlight and you can see that they are pretty similar in design. Even the mounting plate is the same except that the rings is turned 90 degrees. And to mount the light, you need to slide it from the side while the Mr. Beams is from the top. You can now easily control the lights from the app. Now, as I've shown earlier on, in the settings, I set the floodlight to trigger my wired spotlight cam to start recording and turn on its lights whenever the floodlight senses motion. As to the spotlight, I will install this on the other side of my side yard where I linked it to my spotlight cam battery so that when the spotlight senses motion, it will also trigger the spotlight cam. Finally, as to the motion detector, I'll install it near my side gate so that my ring stick up cam battery will start recording whenever the motion detector gets triggered. So you ask why get to this trouble of setting this up because you can always rely on the camera's motion detection. Well, this is the issue and I have preached about this in my previous videos. In my side yard, I can only install battery powered cameras because there's no access to a power outlet. Battery power means that they use PIR sensors. PIR sensors has a flaw. 
it will have a delay in detection when the motion is going towards or away from the sensor. And because my side yard is only 5 feet wide, the motion will always be towards the camera. And the result is, either too late of a recording that the motion is already leaving the frame of the camera or sometimes the recording started too late that the motion is already gone when the recording starts. By the way, this is an issue to all battery-powered Wi-Fi cameras that uses a PIR sensor. So this is the main reason why I purchased these lights. Well, aside from providing lighting at night, it will also trigger my battery-powered ring cameras to start recording earlier. Yeah, and that should start recording. Way before. There is only one way to get to my backyard and that is through my side gate. When getting to the gate, one of my solar lights will get activated. Then coming in, you will set off my second solar light and around the same area is the ring's motion detector, which will trigger my stick up cam battery at the end of the house. This is the third solar light which still works and you will see my stick up cam still recording. This also has triggered my spotlight cam mount version to start recording. Then, my ring floodlight gets triggered, which also triggers my other spotlight cam wired version to start recording and turn on its spotlights. When somebody goes around my back patio to get to the other side of the house, it will trigger my Kuna Maximus floodlight camera. Then the ring spotlight which in turn will trigger my ring spotlight cam battery to start recording and turn on its lights. All said and done, the light themselves are pretty good. Just take note that these lights are softer yellow lights and not white or 5000 Kelvin lights. I'm not sure if Ring will offer a white light version of their smart lights in the future. As to the other functionality of the lights like motion detection and camera linking, there are some issues that I've noticed after a week of testing. First, the floodlight's motion sensor has a lot, I mean a lot of false alerts in daytime. Pretty accurate at night, but in daytime, my phone is just going haywire. I have set it to the lowest sensitivity and have tilted the sensor up and down, but still the sensor gets triggered. So this might be a bad unit and I have to talk to Ring about this. Next is some freezing in the footage. And it seems like it happens when multiple Ring cameras are recording. Like when my stick up cam and my spotlight cam mount is triggered when I link it with the motion sensor. Lastly, and is the one that concerns me is when I was checking my footage in my stick up cam battery and my spotlight cam mount, I noticed that they were not recording in 1080p resolution. In the footage that I showed you earlier, the stick up cam was recording at 720p and my spotlight cam mount at only 480. I was about to conclude that it is an issue with linking of the cameras, but further checking, I noticed it happening also with my floodlight cam and my other ring cameras. And it started sometime around the end of March. Checking my old recordings from March 27th, it is still in 1080p. When I check the one from March 30th, it is only in 720p. Now guys that have ring cameras, check your recordings. Download it in your computer. Right click on the video file and click properties. Click the detail tab and see what is your frame width and height. Check to see if it is in 1080p. 
Comment down below guys and if it is only 720p then this is a major issue and basically false advertising from Ring because most of their new cameras should be in 1080p. Now not all of my recordings since April are in lower resolution but most that I checked were in 720p. So Ring what is going on? Well that's it guys thanks for watching and I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And click that little bell icon so that you'll get notified when I upload product review videos like this video, product updates, comparison videos, and long-term reviews. Thank you.